We knew inventory was going to fall this week. Just like we know it's going to take another run for another couple of weeks. It will then stay, well, relatively level and then pull back for Labor Day and then make another run to year-long highs in the fall. The question is, how high will it go and how much additional leverage will buyers gain? In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update. We're going to talk about some relevant current events. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. We are already seeing sellers offer no buyer agent compensation. I personally am going to be selling a property of mine in a couple of weeks, and I know I'm not going to be offering any. The rules of real estate have changed and buyers are now going to be on the hook for paying their agent two and a half to 3% when buying a house. If you don't want to pay the two and a half to 3%, of the purchase price when buying a house, then take a look at our purchase power plan. In this plan, buyers pay for our services by the hour instead of a percentage of the purchase price. This can save home buyers possibly tens of thousands of dollars. Reach out if you're looking to buy a house and, well, maybe you want to save a small fortune in fees. Let's jump into the single family market stats. As expected, inventory pulled back last week from our year-to-date inventory high. We now have 4,722 single-family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is 3.5% less than the homes on the market just 28 days ago. But buyers have no fear this is going to quickly change. We now have 1,023 more houses on the market today when compared to the same week last year and have 594 fewer houses on the market today than compared to today in 2022. Buyers today sell more than 1,000 units more to choose from than the same time last year. It's great news, and that continues to be exceptional news if you're a home buyer. Now, new listings fell off a cliff this week, and I think it's because the 4th of July holiday actually fell in the middle of the week. This week, we listed 516 single-family homes in the state of Massachusetts. This is 317 units, or 38% fewer homes in the same week in 2023. That four-week rolling average is 1,235 units. Other agreements did not, however, fall off the same cliff as new listings did. This week, we put 846 single-family houses under agreement. This is 155 units, or 22.4% higher than the same week last year. We put 691 houses under agreement. Now, four-week rolling average is 1,128 units. So, when compared to last year's market, new listings were down by 38%, while under agreements were up by 22%. The pennies to new listing ratio was 84.1%. We had 846 properties that went under agreement, which is compared to the 1,006 new listings from just two weeks ago. This number will go off the chart next week, just a heads up. 84.1% is compared to the 122.7% that we saw this week last year. There were 375 single-family houses that closed last week for an average sales price of $797,000 and a median sales price of $628,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 133 units or 26.3% as there were 506 single-family houses that sold this week last year for an average sales price of $824,000. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer you get to zero, the more aggressive of the seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory fell to 1.74 months from last week's 2.05 months to the 1.74 months. This week is compared to the 1.43 months this week last year. It fell so much because our inventory levels fell so much. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. We now have 2,630 condos on the market as of Monday. This means that there was 6.4% less inventory on the market today than the inventory levels of just 28 days ago. Again, more inventory is coming, so buyers do not worry. We now have 463 more units on the market today than compared to today last year. 106, though, fewer than compared to the inventory levels of 2022, and 151 fewer than compared to 2021. Again, new listings, they fell off a cliff. There were 189 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 510 units. The 189 units listed was 189 units or 50% less than the 378 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. This week, we put 323 units under agreement. Now, the 323 condo sales was 47 units or 17% more than last year. We put 276 condos under agreement. A four-week rolling average for under agreements is 440 units. So 50% fewer listings that came on the market this week when compared to last year while selling 17% more condos. 
The condo pendants to new listing ratio this week was 85.2%. This is compared to the 129.6% that we saw this week last year. We will see a big number just like that one come next week. Be prepared. There are 152 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $656,000 and a median sales price of $579,000. This same week last year, there were 219 condos that sold. So sales levels, they were down by 30.6% months of inventory. That fell to 2.09 months from last week's 2.35 months. And this is compared to the months of inventory levels of 1.74 months this week last year. Any chance you can do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference to me as well as the channel. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm while well, subscribing. If you haven't done that one, well, that one doesn't hurt either. So if you're liking the content, please consider subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. This was a good week for interest rates, but we have some big data coming up. We can thank the rate decrease this week to the week job data. Now, I know, I know the headline number came in. Okay, but it's what you get when you start digging into the numbers and maybe most importantly, looking at the revisions from past months that made the difference. So the economy added 206,000 jobs. But the first eyebrow raise was that the unemployment rate ticked up to 4.1%. Okay, the unemployment rate ticking up to 4.1% was thanks to an increase in the labor force participation rate. But a number that I thought was interesting was the broader unemployment rate, which counts discouraged workers and those holding part-time jobs held steady at 7.4%. So Digging in the data just a little bit further, 70,000 of the 206,000 jobs were thanks to a surge in government jobs. Then factor in the revision for April and May payroll data, which actually decreased the job growth by 111,000 jobs. This is what the markets were looking at. They believe this will give the Fed cover in order to cut rates in September. We have the consumer price index and producer price index data coming at us on Thursday and Friday this week which is really gonna help paint this future picture. But I'm not so sure about this. I think this is more banks begging for cheap money again. Because on Friday, Citi dropped a rate cut bomb. They are forecasting eight rate cuts for a full two percentage point decrease of the federal fund rates, which is going to start this September. They are predicting that there is going to be rate cuts every Fed meeting after this next rate meeting that we have, which is at the end of July. Essentially, rate cuts from September of 2024 through June of 2025. Let's just say for a minute that this ends up being true. If that is the case, then get ready for another surge in housing prices. Should the 30-year interest rate hit that five handle, then the floodgates are going to come open. There are now three years of pent-up demand, and should interest rates drop and do so relatively quickly, then this market is going to get crazy. This is why I continue to think and say that asset prices going down significantly is not going to happen. Could we see a month or two where year-over-year -year prices go down? Maybe. That's a slight maybe. But prices coming down haven't happened yet. We've made it through the interest rate tightening cycle with prices not going down. And it seems like we're going to make it through the interest rate steady cycle without prices going down. And I feel pretty darn confident that we won't see prices going down in an interest rate cutting environment. There seems to be little doubt that interest rate cuts are around the corner. How many cuts, I guess, becomes really the only question. Real quick, because I got a little bit of debate in regards to home prices and affordability, there is little doubt that our market sucks if you're a first-time home buyer. The affordability of our market here in Massachusetts, it's painful. But just because it's a tough market doesn't mean that it's going to result in it changing, and let alone changing overnight. Then there's the entire issue of what is considered an affordable market? That is completely subjective based on the individual. But check this one out. Resi Club just released a report revealing the five most affordable and the five least affordable markets in the country for non-homeowner households. In other words, first-time home buyers. As a spoiler alert, the top five worst markets in the country did not include any market in Massachusetts. The worst market was San Diego, where 2.6% of non-homeowner households could afford to buy an average cost house in their market. San Jose, California came in second spot with 2.7% of households. Los Angeles had number three with 2.8% of non-homeowner households. San Francisco in the number four spot with 3.7% of households being able to afford to buy a house. And the fifth city being Salt Lake, Utah, with 3.8% of non-homeowner households being able to afford to buy an average priced home in their market. 
Rising Club also pointed out that 52.3 million out of the 134 million U.S. families do not own a house. And given the tight lending environment, that only 7.2 million of the, or 15.1%, can actually afford to buy a house in their local market. Affordability, it isn't great. It's some of the worst affordability in our history. But incredibly enough, here in Massachusetts, it's not some of the worst in the country. And please imagine me screaming this from the rooftops because it's the truth. Interest rates decreasing fast will not help the affordability issues. The decreased interest rate will result in near immediate jump in asset prices. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Be sure to check out our monthly report we just released last week, but otherwise, until next time.